Hi everyone, this is Arvind from Mind Magics, and today I welcome you all to this amazing session on Jira interview questions. Okay, so guys, so whenever you're appearing for an interview, so the whole idea, or you can say the purpose of this video is once you go through this video, like if you have a look at all the questions that we will be discussing in this particular video, so this video will serve as a revision, and through this video, you can check whether your preparation has been on the right track or not okay so this is what we'll be doing in this particular video and we have a set of questions that we will be discussing here and once you go through this video and if you're able to answer all of the questions then i can assure you that your interview related to jira will go very well so without any further delay let's get started with our first question so the first question is a very basic and most obvious what is Jira? So Jira is an open source project that is used for issuing tracking software that is developed by a company called Atlassian. So Jira is a project management tool and it provides a platform that is mainly confined to tracking issues, finding bugs and the progress of projects under development. So you guys must note one thing over here that there is no defined abbreviation for Jira. The next question is, what are referred to as issues in Jira? So in Jira, an issue can be anything such as a bug or an error, or it could be a new software task. Apart from this, it can also be a resolving ticket or a request processed form. The next question is, what are few report types available to generate using Jira? So guys, as you can see on the screen, there are a few report types which are available to generate in Jira, such as time tracking, resolution time, user workload, pie chart, resolved versus created issues, and much more. The next very important question over here is compare Jira and Trello. So guys, whenever you're asked such kind of questions in the interview, so what you can do is you can grab a piece of paper and on that paper, you can make two columns, one for Jira and the other one for Trello. Okay, and now we will be comparing Jira and Trello based on a few pointers. So the first point of comparison over here is integrations. So if you talk about Jira, there are about 100 integration partners that are available here. And in case of Trello, about 30 integration partners are available. OK, so you can clearly see Jira has an edge over Trello if you talk about integrations. Now, the next point of comparison is mobile apps. So both Jira and Trello are available on Android as well as iOS. OK, the next point is. The company which built Jira and Trello. So as discussed earlier, Jira has been developed by the company called Atlassian and Trello has been developed by Fog Creek Software Company. OK, the next point of comparison is the hosting. So you with Jira. It can be hosted on on premise as well and cloud based Hosting is available as well. Whereas if you talk about Trello, so with Trello, you have only cloud based hosting. OK, the next point over here is the key features. So basically Jira is available for project and issue tracking. Whereas Trello is available for Kanban boards. OK, and now if you talk about the next point, so the next point over here is typical customers. So for Jira, you have SMEs and enterprises, whereas for Trello, you have freelancers and SMEs. OK, and now the next point of comparison is the pricing. So Jira starts at $10 per month, whereas Trello is free. OK, and the last point over here is the additional fees. OK, so with Jira, you have implementation or training services available, whereas nothing is available for Trello if you talk about additional fees. So guys, this was a rough comparison between Jira and Trello. The next question is explain working with workflows in Jira. So a Jira workflow is an arrangement of statuses and transitions that an issue travels through amid its life cycle and normally speaks to forms inside your organization. So there are predefined built in workflows that can't be altered. In any case, you can duplicate and utilize these built in workflows to make your own. OK, so guys, in this particular question, 
you can refer to the diagram that is present on your screen. Okay, so this diagram basically explains the overall life cycle of a workflow. So guys, let's move to the next question. The next question is define workflow designer in Jira. So the Jira workflow designer is a graphical tool that enables you to see the design layout of your workflow and to make and alter a workflows procedure and transitions. So with workflow designer, you can oversee the status at advances, including snap and drag or select to alter the properties like workflow properties to rename or erase from the workflow. Then you can include a worldwide transition that permits each different status in the work process to change to the choose status. So uh, for this, I repeat. So for this, you have to select allow all statuses to transition to this one in the properties board for the transition. The next question is how a service desk works in Jira. So first your client presents a demand for your service agents through an entryway or by means of email. After this, a service desk sees the demand in the Jira service desk line and investigates the issue. After this, your client and different members utilize the entry or email to talk about demand with your service desk agent who works in the Jira service desk. And in the last step, your specialist finishes the demand and your client is fulfilled. The next question is how to define the Jira component. So components are sub segments of a project. They are utilized to assemble issues inside an undertaking into little parts. So for dealing with a project's components, what you have to do is you have to sign in into Jira as a project admin. After this, what you can do is you can choose settings, then projects and tap on the name of the project. So the project summary page will appear once you do this. After this, what you have to do is you have to choose components in the left menu and the components page is shown demonstrating a rundown of components and every components information. The next question is how to delete a component in Jira. So there are basically two steps over here. So on the components screen float over the significant component to show the delete option. So you will be provoked to connect these issues with another component on the off chance that you wish. The next question is a very important question. So the question says explain cloning an issue in Jira. So cloning or copying an issue that allows you to rapidly make a copy of an issue inside a similar project. The clone issue is a mirror image of the original issue and contains similar data put away in the original issue. So the clone issue can likewise be connected to the original issue. A clone issue is a different element from the original issue. So tasks on the first issue have no impact on the clone issue and the other way around as well. So the main connection is a link if made between the original issue and the clone issue. So cloning and reissue basically retains the summary, description, assignee, environment, reporter, components, affects version, fix for version, priority, issue types, security, attachment, issue links, project and so on. And you must keep a very important thing in mind that there are a few issues that cannot be cloned such as time tracking, issue history, comments, and links to confluence pages. The next question is explain the steps to create a clone issue. So first and foremost, open the Jira issue that you want to be cloned. After this, you have to select more and then clone. Also, you can edit the summary of the clone issue if it is required. In case the issue contains links to another issue. So what you can do is in the select in new clone issue as if or not to include the links. So in case the issue contains subtasks, what you can do is you can select in the new clone issue as if or not to create the subtasks. So in case the issue contains the attachment, once you click on select in the new clone issue as if or not to include the attachments. So once you do all of this, you just have to click on create. The next question is what do cloning and issues mean? So in simple words, it is the process of creating a duplicate issue with the original one in order to assign the issue to multiple users to resolve. 
So this cloned issue will have important attributes like summary, description, issue types, priority and so on of the original issue to ensure it is resolved in the end. The next question is what information is not recorded in the cloned issue from the original one. So comments, time tracking and history of the issue are not carried on to the cloned issue. So guys, the next question is what are the schemas in Jira? So schemas define a set of values that can be used as Jira project configurations. So one set of schema can be used for one or more project configurations. So guys, the next question is, which is based on the previous question. How many types of schemas exist in Jira? So guys, there are basically seven types of schemas that exist in Jira. As you can see on the screen, they are notifications, screens, permissions, workflows, field configurations, issue types, custom fields, and so on. The next question is, can we backup data in Jira cloud? So the answer to this question is yes, Jira provides backup functionality of the data, but it can save backup files only once. And next time when you backup, the existing data will be overwritten. Like this question was based on a scenario. So if you have good amount of hands-on experience with the Jira, you will be able to easily answer such kind of questions in the actual interview as well. So let's move to the next question. So the next question is what kind of data can be backed up? So if you talk about the data which can be backed up, so it includes issues, avatars, users and their settings and attachments can also be backed up. The next question is what does a validator do? So validators take care of the inputs to be provided for any transaction. So without valid approval for the inputs from the validators, one cannot complete the transaction. The next question is what is the issue collector? So a feedback form provided to collect issues or bugs on the website that are to be addressed by the customers of the website is one of the features provided by Jira. And to address bugs, users no need to have Jira registration. The next question is, what is the audit log? So an audit log is basically a log file to save all of the information about the issue. The next question is, what information is stored in the issue change history? So creation and deletion of issues, deletion of comments, attachments, and issue field changes are saved in the issue change history. The next question is, how can you perform bulk operations on issues? So Jira provides an option to execute bulk operations. So for that, what you have to do is you have to select the bulk change option from the tools menu, and then you can perform the transition, deletion, move or edit option for all of the issues on the current page. The next question is what to do if you don't want to perform the bulk operation on mail notification issues. So in the bulk operations wizard, you need to uncheck the email notification to disable it. The next question is how can you track time spent on the issue? So issue tracking is made easy with three different colors representing three different statuses of an issues such as blue, orange and green. So if you talk about blue color, so estimated time to resolve the issue is denoted by blue color. And if you talk about orange color, so it denotes the remaining time to resolve the issue. And finally, you have green color, which denotes the total time spent to resolve the issue. The next question is, what is scheduling of an event in Jira? So scheduling an event is activated in order to trigger action with respect to the issue. And to perform this scheduling, one should request schedule issue permission from the administrator. So this provides a due date to an issue to be scheduled for. The next question is what are field configurations? So field configurations are nothing but a set of instruction given as configuration to Jira to define a field's behavior like the necessity of fields, field visibility and so on. The next question is what do you mean by an issue in Jira? So various organizations utilize Jira to track various types of issues. So contingent upon how your organization is utilizing Jira, an issue could represent a product bug, a project assignment, a help desk ticket, a leave request form and so on. So you can get 
to an issue in Jira from a query result or from a dashboard gadget that gives access to issues. So in general, an issue in Jira looks like something which is present on your screen right now. So guys, for more reference, you can have a look at the diagram which is present on your screen. OK, so this screenshot represents an issue. OK, so guys, with this, we have come to the end of the session on Jira interview questions. I hope you guys have enjoyed this session. If at all you have any queries or doubts related to this video, then you can write them in the comment section and my team is here to help you resolve all your doubts and queries. So guys, thank you so much for being with us and I wish you all the very best for your upcoming interview.